Coming up on AI Bytes today, LTX Video has released three LoRa's that act as control net and let you have fine-grained control over your video output. What if I told you your video models could make better images than your text-to-image models? Stay tuned to see how. And Mark Zuckerberg is paying how much? Hello guys and welcome to another episode of AI Bytes. First thing we're talking about today is LTX Video. So LTX Video has released three special LoRa's. These LoRa's essentially act as a control net for your text to video workflow. So they've released this workflow that we're looking at right now. We'll have a link to this in the description of the video so you can launch it with one click on its SD. But basically what this does is it allows you to select one of these LoRa's that are basically just like control net. So one of them is depth, one of them is pose, and the other one is canny. And they allow you to take an input video like the one we have here, although the video is not playing right now on this, on this node. And they allow you to modify it, but use it as an input to a kind of a control net. So in this example that I'm showing you here, and these are all the defaults that come with the workflow. If you look at the LTX video GitHub repository, you see that here we're using canny. So we're, the, the model is taking the key lines from the original video and based on our prompt, it's just restyling it. So the prompt here is uh, a robot walking in a desert. So it just changed the person into something like a robot and it's walking tried. in the desert. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had that much luck with LTX video, have we? No, I'm not a huge fan. Maybe this will give us some control. Yeah, I've spent less time with LTX than, on, than any other models, to be honest. But this seems pretty promising. Uh, so, yeah, let's try this. Uh, we've tried this with um, uh, with Canny right now. Let's try it with Pose once and see what we get. So you can see here, it actually gives you every frame of the pose that it detects. And LTX video always goes through a few passes. So there's the first pass here that we're just generating now. I'm running this on an H100, so it should be pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, just LTX, the one good thing about it is that it's generally pretty quick. Actually, I, earlier I was running this on a A40 and it was still running yeah. pretty fast. And it, it takes so little VRAM. Yeah, so this is one of the interesting things that I found about this workflow so far. They recommend that you use Pose if you're dealing with people, which we are in this video. And this is the sample video that they've released with this workflow, except because the prompt says a robot walking in the desert, it just injects a robot in this hmm. the clip instead of turning the person into a robot. So it's using the pose I mean, the... for a person and then putting a robot in there as well. Yeah, and the robot seems to be following the same pose too. That's true, yeah. But I, I don't know how, if that's reliable behavior or not. Yeah. So this final node kind of stitches them all together so you can see the comparison. Yeah, there we go. So that's with the with the pose and the yeah, other robot is just there extra. Yeah, interesting. But I can see some cool applications of this. If you can create the input video exactly the way you want, maybe you want to kind of film something in your house and then have that be transformed into something else. This could be useful for TikTok videos. Yeah, with LTX, what I noticed is that it's generally better with uh, image to video than it is with text to video. Uh, so if you do have a starting point, it does half decent. So actually, this reminds me, they did release. Uh, so this workflow includes this element, which is a reference image. So let me add that. So they do say that this reference image that you provide here, it has to match the first frame of your input video for best results, but let's just see how this does. So are we using, which one are we using right now? I think you're using pose right now. We're still on pose. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how this goes. So now we have a reference image here, so it should not be providing the extra person or the extra robot. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. And when it goes through its detailing steps and upscaling, it will do a much better job with the final result. Yeah, as expected, I think it's going to do much better with a starting image. So speaking of having great starting images, can you think of a way that we can generate really, really awesome starting images for our video generation? 
So this not, might not be news to everybody, but video generation models are great at generating images. The first time I heard about this was when uh, Van came out and I was too busy playing around with the video functionality and I just completely forgot about it until I saw the Reddit post the other day and they shared the workflow and we just wanted to take it for a spin and see how it performs. So the workflow has both uh, Skyreel and Van uh, as the models that we can use for image generation. I've been blown away so far with the results. So let me just uh, show you a couple examples of how it does and what it is good at and what it's not good at. Sounds good. Let's see it. Okay, so here I've got two workflows side by side. On the left hand side, we have the uh, Van image generation workflow. Uh, which will have it on instance C and you can uh, use it as well. And on the right side, I've got the flux dev, the basic workflow images being generated at 28 steps. So right off the bat, I did one image of a, of a Roman battlefield with the Roman warriors fighting barbarians. And the van just blows away a flux. As you can see, you have both type of the characters described in the, in the prompt. You have both the barbarians and the Romans, which the barbarians are clearly missing from flux. By the way, these are not cherry picked. These are just the images I generated the first the first pass. Uh, the anatomy is much better, which is what I've noticed is the video models do much better in anatomy than flux. At the minute, uh, like the shields make sense, how they're holding it, and the skin is so much better. I mean, right off the bat, you can see the flux plasticky skin all over here, which is not the case in this one. So this was generated with Van. I'm going to do one run of the same prompt with Skyreel and see how that does. And for the sake of doing this, I'll do another run of Flux as well, just to see two random seats, how they perform side by side. It's crazy how high our standards are, right? Like even six months ago, generating either of these would have been, uh, or maybe, maybe a little bit more than six months ago. I don't know. I don't remember exactly when Flux came out, but the flex image is really great, but as soon as you start paying attention to some of the details and you're like, oh yeah, I can definitely see it doing better. And there's also this element of like the way that they're, the two different groups are facing each other in the, in the, it just makes a lot yeah. more sense. And I don't know why the models like flex can't do that kind of thing very well. Yeah, I think it's uh, really depends on like the training data, right? Like these were trained on probably movie scenes right. and they have a better understanding of how to do this for the most part. So this is Sky Reels and look how cinematic that looks. That looks really good. It looks really good, but this one, I, I can see a lot more inconsistencies compared to the previous one that we were looking at. Compared to like the way yeah. the, the weapons I like the look and of... feel of this one more yeah. just because it looks more cinematic, but that's, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe lighting is a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, if you look at both of these images right now, there's all kinds of like inconsistencies with the shields, with the swords. Yeah, for sure. One more prompt I wanted to try was just a city kind of prompt. So let's take people out of it and maybe try a futuristic city and see how that looks. So it's going to be a realistic image of a futuristic city. And let me just run both of them at the same time. So we're going to try sky reels side by side with flux. Uh, the generation is going to be obviously a little bit slower on the video models because we, we have to generate a few, a few frames at the minimum, and then we're taking the first frame. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas flux is just generating one image. So that's a pretty nice image from flux, right? I can't complain about that. No. It's a beautiful image. Let's see what sky reel gets us. Okay. And here's the image of sky reels. Like this looks beautiful. In this scenario, it, this is really the di difference between what you prefer. I, I like both yeah. of these. Um, the Skyreel one feels more polished and more cinematic again, probably because what like what's been trained on, it just feels more futuristic. At least the prompt seems a little bit better followed. It's a little bit like the 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 flex one. Would, I would imagine it's like a bit more of a video game. And the other one is more like a, it's more of a movie. It's more cinematic. It's more like heavy a little bit. Exactly. But it, it does really, it's a bit of a subjective thing. In this case, they're both really, really good. Yeah. Uh, let me just quickly try a van as well with the same prompt. Now, when you're using these video generation models to make images, are they taking up more resources than a simple text-to-image text model? Surprisingly, no. 
they are not. Right. That the VRAM requirements are not uh, significantly more, or at times they're actually less. So it really depends on the model. Like Skyreels actually uses re less resources than it, than Flux does. And here's the van. Yeah, I mean, same same look and feel. As as yeah, kind of depends on the. I'm I am applying a film film grain here to these mm -hmm. ones, so it might be a little grainy, but that's because that's on purpose. Now let me just try one more prompt. So one thing that they don't do well in in the video generation models are unrealistic scenes. So let's try like one unrealistic scene here, something that's actually pretty complex, like a three D model of a of a balloon. We gotta try to see which one does better. So here I'm running van, and then on the other side, let's see. It was probably better if I had disabled green for this one. Well, there you have it. This is what we were going for an actual balloon and this is what we ended up getting a uh, very realistic front look of a plane i think but what is the prompt exactly it's a 3d model of a green var balloon clash of clans okay so so it's right. going for like a game kind of uh All right thing, which which i think flux did a really good job of getting it right right Interesting. whereas this one did not do so well let's just quickly try sky Rizzle as well i'm actually gonna disable the film grain for this one. No, I think this workflow is using a bunch of different LoRa's and one of them is a realism LoRa. So I wonder what would happen. There is a, re that. a realism and a cinematic uh, a LoRa. So let's just run this one and then we'll disable those and see if it does any better. But wait, this particular workflow with its using all these LoRa's that have all been kind of fine tuned with their just the right strength to give really great good uh, results. Uh, it was published by a user on, on Civitai. So I think we'll, we'll link to that. You can follow the user on, on there as well. So again, very realistic. So let's just disable these LoRa's that are the realistic ones at least. So we don't, we want to disable the realism and I'm going to also disable the movie gen. So let's see if they do. All right, let's see if it does any better. You can just see, as you were talking about resources, they're using 12% of the VRAM. I mean, I'm running this on an A100, uh, but you can see on here on the Flux, it was using up to 41% of that right. 80 gigabyte. A100 or H100? A100 on A100. I was feeling frugal today. I feel like it takes longer than usual, though, with these uh, video. Because video last blocks. time we tested it, it was running on H100. It does take longer than Flux, because this is generating five frames at minimum. Whereas Flux is just doing one image. That's not great, even without the uh, Loras. Let's that's just much worse try Van as well. Yeah. At least the other one made made a lot of sense. This one doesn't really make much sense. Well, I guess th this hasn't been... I guess been... It's, on, it's, in a, it's in like a room or something because it's a 3D model. Okay, I guess I see I see what it did. It tried. Like, I can see what it's going with, but I, this this thing has no concept of, let's say, Clash of Clans. Right, it right. hasn't been trained on, but this is clearly been trained on that data. Mm -hmm. You can see that the resemblance. This one really wants to put planes in there. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're going with realism, I would definitely look into the video models. They do fantastic job. They're very good at anatomy. They are very good with creating uh, realistic and um, cinematic looking images. They're grading starting point uh, for any of your image to video workflows. Anyways, and uh, we have we have both of these uh, workflows uh, available on InstaSD if you want to take them for a drive. Yeah, awesome. So I guess the last thing we want to talk about a little bit of a uh, news. We always like to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on and outside of pure image generation, uh, what's going on in the wider AI world. And I guess the big topic for the last week has been all these uh, big checks that Mark Zuckerberg is uh, is writing. So he has been poaching top talent from everywhere. Nat Friedman and Daniel Gross were some of the first people that uh, that he signed on. And now he's been going after the top AI talent on in OpenAI and from Apple. Apple of all people, the, the one Apple. company that has, cannot afford to lose any AI talent. I'm surprised Apple's not writing the big checks. I'm quite surprised. Like I know Meta has all the money, but like... We all know how much Apple has been uh, stashing away, and I'm surprised they're also using some of that to 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 race against this AI war. 
Yeah, I mean, somebody, I saw someone on, on X who was quote tweeting himself from like a year ago. And then like at that, a year ago, he was quote tweeting himself from a year before. Uh, so basically for three years in a row, he was saying, Apple's really like behind in AI. And then new, uh, next year, so Apple Apple's still really behind on it in AI. Yeah. And then uh, still Apple is really behind on AI. But actually what's interesting is... Uh, I think that the thing that matters is if the models are kind of becoming commoditized, uh, the thing that matters is distribution. So Apple probably doesn't worry about it that much. Microsoft doesn't worry about it that much. And Meta doesn't worry about it that much. I think right now for Meta, the big thing is, can we can we kneecap potential competition? And clearly they see OpenAI as the real competition here because they're really attacking them everywhere, every way they can. Some of these like, compensation packages are insane. They're like $100 million compensation packages, which I guess kind of makes sense if you can't really acquire the company, then you have to pay acquisition prices for the talent, right? Yeah, yeah. Some of some of the, some of these are uh, pretty huge. I, I wonder how Sam Altman uh, feels right now, and that he has to like offer the same kind of packages to keep some of the talent around. I did see a little clip of him trying to downplay it and just kind of saying, "Yeah, it's okay. We'll uh, we'll we'll get through this." And uh, yeah, just kind of. Oh, actually, that reminded me. This is pretty much. Let me show you the clip. This. This was the, this was him during the interview. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's interesting because now, because models are such commodities, because Meta has distribution, they're very open with like building open source models and all that, which is basically what OpenAI was supposed to be doing. It's even from a ideological point of view, it's pretty easy for them, I imagine, to, to poach talent that joined OpenAI because it was supposed to be right. open if they can go to Meta and actually work on open stuff. Right. Since Meta is the only one that has been releasing really good. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, they, they, models. they got people based on a specific mission and they haven't been true to the mission so far. It's pretty easy for someone to just switch based on the compensation package. Cause if the mission's not there, then the, all that matters is the, is the money, right? Exactly. Yeah. So Mark, if you're listening, uh, there is some talent at, uh, in CSC, if you, <laughs> if you want to poach us, no, just kidding. We like what we're doing. Cool. I think that's all we have for this week. And remember guys, this is what we do every, every week. We talk a little bit about the latest things we found about comfy UI and the latest things that have been going on in the world of AI generally. So if you like it, make sure to like, and subscribe and yeah, we'll see you next week. See you soon.